Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Danoon Institute of Biblical Research as well as Israeli News Live. And uh, I just thought it'd be great to air this on both channels. Uh, this part of our teaching work that we do on Danoon Institute have not done something more recently and uh, are recently there. And it's, it's, as I said a few months back, this is really the hour that biblical teachings really must come forth. And, uh, and I'm asking you to be praying for me as well, because uh, the time spent in prayer and seeking God is more vital, not just for myself, but you as well. Uh, we are living in a very serious hour. And uh, there's been a, a number of issues that have come up recently. Uh, and, and this actually happens more frequently than you probably would imagine. Uh, but I've been hearing, seeing more and more young people that are battling issues in their mind. Um, they're, they're, they're going through temptations, they're going through trials, and, uh, uh, and they don't know what to do with it. They, they feel like they're backslidden, they feel like they're lost. But this is not limited to just young people. This can be with a Christian that is seasoned, that has been serving the Lord for years. This could be uh, men or women. You know, Satan could care less about where you are in Christ. He's always there to try to trouble you. If you remember when Jesus was, uh, went into the wilderness for 40 days, uh, he was tempted of the devil. And a lot of people think, well, that's where it all ended. No, the scripture says the devil left him for a season. So, the possibility he also went through more temptation, more trials. We just don't have the record of that written in the canon of scripture. But the mere fact that the scripture says that Satan left him for a season lets us know you go through trials, then there's a rest period, and then it's going to happen again. And... I wanted to share some insights with you guys that I really felt like would help you. Uh, and as well, as I was looking for a scriptural place to, to give a little foundation on it, I stumbled across, uh, which I don't believe we stumble across things, I believe everything is directed of God, but an amazing revelation from the book of James, where James also is talking about temptations. And uh, so we're going to go there, and then I really want to break down, for those of you, uh, maybe I'll start even with that for part first. Some of the simplicity of how Satan works. And maybe it might help you. Oh, I shouldn't say maybe. I really believe it would help you. I believe it would help a lot of young people out there uh, that are suffering different issues. Because like I said, these things are brought to my attention uh, very frequently. Uh, let's start off, though. I want to just take you in, in the book of James, chapter 1, and let's look at some of this here. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, um, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Now, I've got to back up to verse 5 just for a moment here. I've got to point something to you out there. Point something out to you there, I should say. When we read where it says that giveth to all men liberally, notice the word men in your Bible is italicized. It doesn't say the word men. It says, and giveth, uh, excuse me, and it shall be given all liberally. All right? So God is no respect of persons there. It doesn't, it's not just for men, right? It's for men and women. So. Anyway, I just like to throw those things in there because sometimes we, we, we miss these things. For let not the man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice that he is exalted, but the rich and that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. All right? For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth 
So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he has tried, he shall receive the crown of life, <clears throat> which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. All right? So if you endure the temptation, he shall receive the crown of life. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. We're going to come back to this in just a few minutes here, but really pay attention to these, these right here, 14 to 17. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of a man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of the naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. All right. Now, that kind of sets the whole premise, the whole text that we're going to get into uh, this evening. But as I was reading this, I decided to look in depth in this, in the Greek language here, because there were just certain little key words that caught my attention. And, of course, I was looking for temptation, what people go through, because so many people battle these issues. And we're going we're gonna to really look into that in a moment, because I really think a lot of this would help a lot of people, because many times people, when Satan is tempting them, they, they, they think that the temptation is, is where they sin. No, it's not. That's what's clear here. The temptation is not sin. It's where you take the temptation. All right? That's where sin, that's where sin is conceived at, is where you take it. But let's look at it, because there's a greater revelation in this than meets the eye. Then when lust hath conceived, maybe we should back up to verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. All right? That is where every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, that caught my attention right there, the very word conceived in English, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Now when you look, and I'll share with you here on the screen, when we go and we begin to break these words down in the Greek language, I found it interesting. Now, we didn't need anything particular for the word conceived. It is exactly what it is, solabano, all right, which means to specifically to conceive, literally or figuratively. Now, I do believe that there is a figure, is more of a figurative application here in the book of James, but I also realize it could be very much a real conception, and that is actually what brought forth the Nephilim themselves, all right? But I don't want to go too deep into that aspect of it, all right? So anyway, so the conceived is conceived, right? And bringeth forth, this is what got me, and bringeth forth sin. So there is a conception all right, and it's a spiritual, it's then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth, and that word right there from G5088, tikto, is literally to produce seed, offspring, a child. All right, so when lust hath conceived, it brings forth or it produces or to be gotten or to be born, it births sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Now, again, the word bringeth forth in English is there, but it's a different word, apokueo, and I don't, I'm not a Greek guy, okay? Uh, Hebrew is my, the language I understand, but not Greek. But anyway, goes also into to breed forth. 
still very much like conception. And I believe a lot of this has to do because the fall that took place uh, back in uh, before the Andalusian destruction, when the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, written in Genesis chapter six, this is exactly what happened. The sons of God, in this case here, are the fallen angels. Now, I was able to prove that. I don't have the time to do it right now. But in the Genesis from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the book they have there, clearly shows those sons of God were the fallen angels. All right? And so in their case, that's exactly, that was the root cause of sin to begin with. All right? And it was caused from what? Lust. So therefore, even in the figurative sense, what we're looking at when we're looking at the book of James here, is that when lust hath conceived, it brings forth or it produces a seed of sin, almost like producing a child. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Now Satan is death. That's how evil, how wicked that is. But watch what he also says. And this is why we know where this is going to when James speaks about it. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. All right, so there again, he's using the analogy of giving birth, but in this case, it is the spiritual birth, right? Of, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. So if we, if we, if we abide in him, if we put our hearts towards him, it brings forth life. That, as, as noted what he said, with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wow. First fruits. See, they were the very first children, the very first spiritual born sons and daughters of God when Christ came on the earth. Because notice, the, the, see, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, which was Christ, Christ Jesus and cometh down from the Father of lights. He's talking about Jesus. With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. There's no darkness around him, in other words. See, when the sun shines, there's no shadows on the ground. He's perfect light. And it also, it, it uses that, because we know that when, like in a physical uh, union between a man and a woman, they talk about that there is this burst of light, because it's life coming forth. Right now, of his own excuse, see, uh, so he, so of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. So as we meditate on the word of God, the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of the naughtiness and receive with the meekness the engrafted word, which is, right, which is able to save your souls. All right. Now, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So in order to bring forth the life of Christ within us, we must be not just hearers of His Word, but the doers of His Word, allowing the Word of God to come inside of us and graft in us and birth us as the creatures of God. All right, now, let's go back. Because like I said, I wanted to deal with the issue there, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. In other words, it births sin. And that sin will eventually, when it is finished, is going to bring forth death. It's going to bring forth a child of death because it will corrupt your soul. 
all right? But now here's where a lot of people run into issues on all this. And this is what I wanted to share with you. This is why I wanted to really talk to a lot of people that are going through these things. Satan is a very, he's, he is a mastermind of temptation. He's a mastermind of, of bringing guilt upon people, things of that nature there. And especially those people that are, that are young Christians that have believed the Lord, they've received the grafted word into their hearts. Um, next thing you know, they start going through the different temptations. Many times, and the way it normally starts is just like where the Word of God, we hear the Word of God, we hear something, it comes into our ears, comes into our minds, as when we hear the Word of God, and that brings forth the truth, that brings forth life from Christ in us. But when it comes to sin, what happens, and I hear this so often, people will talk about, you know, I, I, I'm battling these thoughts. Because everything begins with the thought. Now, like I said, though, it could be something you heard. You might have uh, uh, or, or seen something. You know, you might see a, a, a bad picture. Uh, you know, something that, that, that's very negative, very ungodly. Uh, and, of course, Satan, he, listen, Satan's got everything out there for the people to tempt you. He's got the advertisements. He's got the TV. He's got your, your, your smart uh, pads, your smartphones. He's got the billboards on the road. He's got the music inside the store, inside your car, which you can control what's in your car. But he's got, he's got everything out there to bombard the mind. If you went back, say, to the 1800s, we didn't have the radios, we didn't have the televisions, we didn't have the smartphones, smart pads, any of that kind of stuff. So Satan did not have near at his disposal the AI technology to bring man down as a prisoner as he has done today. But now that they have, we have all of this, it has put not only the adults, but especially the younger generation, it has really put them more vulnerable than any other time in history. Used to be, the only way Satan could work with someone is he just tries to come and inject thoughts into your mind. And this is where a lot of people, they get nervous. And this is, some, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this, this subject up. Because I was dealing with a, per, a young person just recently that has been talking, telling me, sharing with me that the worst thoughts you could imagine come to their mind. And so I asked them, I said, how does that make you feel when those thoughts come? They said, I don't want anything to do with that. I, I don't like it. I don't, I can't, I, I, don't, I don't understand why it's there. That's not, that's not the way I am. I said, there's your key right there. I said, what you don't understand, a Satan is a mastermind at what he does. And the first thing he likes to do is to use your voice to speak to you in your head. I said, when you have a thought like that that comes to your mind, no matter how vulgar, dirty, whatever it might be, I mean, it could, maybe it's not vulgar, just maybe it's you want to go shoot your neighbor or something like that. Maybe it could be something like that. Or, 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 you know, but I said, all kinds of evil thoughts can come to your mind. I said, but the devil doesn't come with some other voice and say to you, you should go do this or you should go do that. He comes and uses your voice and speaks in your head. And when that happens, especially if it just keeps on happening, people get nervous and they think, oh my gosh, oh God, what, what is this? I, I, I'm not like that. I don't, wanna, I don't want that to happen to me. That's perfect. That, that's the best thing to hear, for me to hear. When you, can, when you can say that to me, see, that tells me right there, Satan hasn't got you. But he's trying to convince you that he has you. He's trying to convince you that this is what you really are because he's putting the thoughts in your mind. All right? But let me, let me share something with you. See if I can find this real quick. But what you have to realize is that God doesn't look at what your head is thinking. God knows Satan puts thoughts in a man's mind or a woman's mind or whatever it may be. If we look at 1 Samuel 16... And uh, let's see here if I just, let me go back and see where this is actually at here. 
uh, verse 7. So let's, let's scroll down to that. Just as a reminder here, and this is where Samuel, when, when he was sent out to go to, to choose David, he was surprised because he was just a little bitty guy. And But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, in other words, the way he looks, uh, or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For it is not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. All right, so when you're going along and you're being troubled by these thoughts that are coming into your head, that's not sin. It's not sin because the thought came in your head. And because Satan is so clever to use your voice to speak to you, that's not sin. But what you do with that thought is what matters. That's why when we look at what James is saying over here, he says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. All right? You're not tempted because of the thought. Most people are not. That's why I say the easy way to know whether or not that thought is from you or not, because Satan is going to try to convince you, oh, you know, he'll put that evil thought in your mind, and the next thing you know, you're going like, oh my God, oh my God. Am I like this? I don't want to be like that, God. Oh, God, please, Lord, take that away. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to be like that, Father. That's what's in your heart. See, God looks at your heart. He's not looking at what the devil just put in your head. So that's the good sign. All right? So when God sees that, that's not what you're seeing here. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You're not being drawn away. You're immediately, God, I, I'm not, I don't want to be like that. Now, if people would begin to recognize that that's not God. Oh, excuse me, that's not, excuse me. If people would begin to recognize that that's Satan putting those thoughts in your head, you'd have victory. You wouldn't even waste your time with it. Someone asked me not long ago, you know, if I have that, th those bad thoughts, uh, uh, you know, do, do I need to be repenting for it? I said, let me ask you this. I said, did you want the thought there in the first place? I said, is this something that bothers you? You hate that that thought was there? They said, of course, I don't want to be like that. I said, that's not you. Why do you need to repent for something you didn't do? Notice what the scripture says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. The temptation is when you are you you really begin to fantasize over that thought. You don't want nobody knowing you think that because you really like it. Now I'm not going to say that the devil that brings a thought to your head doesn't like it. Sure he does. He's the, he's the one that he does all these evil things that are on the earth. That doesn't make it you. And this is what people have really got to get that you, need, you really need a revelation of that. That's not you. Just because the thought comes to your mind doesn't make that you. It's what you do with that thought. Now, I'm not going to say a thought comes to your mind and then you don't give in to that. And when if you give in to it, yes, now you have sin. Now you need to repent for those things. But that doesn't mean you have to stay down. You get back up again. You put on the armor of God and you fight because what did he also say here? See, now we know that if we're led away of our own lust and enticed, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it, when it is finished, it brings forth death. That's why as he goes on, as James says, there's every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That's Christ. Of his own will beget he us with the word of truth. So we, we want to bring in God's word always to our mind. Meditate upon his word. I believe Paul said one time, Think on those things that are lovely. Think on those things that are good. Because I guarantee you one thing, if you don't, 
if you do have those thoughts that come to your mind, like I said, that doesn't make you a bad person, but if those things keep coming, Satan will keep hammering you, hammering you, hammering you, because he's trying to break into the house. So you need your house fortified with the Word of God. And, you know, it's kind of like being in a battle, too. That's another thing I've noticed as well. Uh, people that, that, that they'll go through the trials, they go through the temptations, things like that. And as soon as they start going through them, they, they're having these the troubles, because, you know, it always starts with a thought. Everything begins with a thought. Then the thought goes to an action. You know, then of course, and of course, those, sometimes those actions can be very devastating, can be devastating on families, marriages, could be devastating on you, physical life. Uh, you know, it could be, you know, other things as well, bad habits, all kinds of things that are out there. And, and like I said, Satan has got people bombarded with the AI world, you know, and everywhere you turn, it's there. Boom, 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 boom. So try to, you know, get away from some of the technology issues. Uh, and another thing, too, it's like I said, being in battle, being in a war zone. When, when, when men are trained to go to fight in a war, one of the main things they're taught to do is keep their mouth shut and be still. Why? When you move, if you're on a battlefield, you sneeze, the enemy knows where you're at. He hears you. You know, or you reach out and scratch your head. He sees your hand move. You know, I mean, I've spent my life in the woods. You know, animals are smart. Deer are smart. Squirrels are smart. They know to be really still until they think you're not there or they think you're not paying attention or you're not a threat. And when they think you're not a threat, they'll move. When they move, they could be so camouflaged in, but that movement will catch your eye. And that's what Satan's waiting on. He's waiting on you to say, Oh God, it hurts. He's waiting on you to say, Oh, I can't believe I'm like that. Oh, oh, wow, that, that really works. Oh, see, the devil don't even know what really bothers you. I mean, I shouldn't say that. He studies you since you're a child. He studied you since you were really little. He knows the things that do bother you. I should, so, so I shouldn't say it like that. But the point is, he doesn't know what's effective until your big mouth tells him. Then he knows. So first, learn to realize that when you're tempted... A thought comes to your mind or something like that. That doesn't make you a bad person. We all get thoughts. As the old saying used to be, you know, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. And that's very true. But what happens is those thoughts come to our mind and then the next thing you know, we begin to be convinced that it's us because the devil's using your voice and you begin to yield to it. That's when sin is beginning to conceive. Now, you can put a stop to that though, and that's through repentance. And then recognizing that what is really in your heart? Did you want to be that way? Of course not. And once we begin to recognize that, then we can begin to go back and feed on the Word of God, being prayer, Meditating upon the Lord, having, his, having Him on your mind always, especially in prayer. That's what's so important. I hope it's been a blessing to you this afternoon. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Thank you also for your support and love of this ministry. It's what keeps us going. It's a very difficult time, I will tell you that right now. Uh, when I say difficult, because we can't be at our own home. Uh, and that's what's very difficult. But we thank you for your help, because if it wasn't for your help, we wouldn't be able to go into hiding in the first place. So God bless you, and we love you. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, if you want to support the work we do. Uh, our mailing address will be in the description of this video or at the end of it, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research or online, IsraeliNewsLive.org. God bless you.
good evening.